I am loving the Salt Queens. I am loving the Salt Queens. Shout out to Bronwyn who ate Lisa up, okay, and left no crumbs. Shout out to Todd for being a very supportive husband. Now, I talk tr cash money about you, okay, because you old. All right, I did. I talk cash money about you, but I think Todd is a, a halfway decent person, okay, I'm, just from what I'm seeing with him and Bronwyn. And I'll leave it at that because I really don't know him like that, like that. And girl, I'm not featuring. <laughs> I'm not featuring the whites right now, okay? But uh, if we're going to watch the whites, child, Ty seemed like a, a decent, halfway decent person to me. But I don't know how he votes. So I'll leave that up to i leave that up to the ancestors to let us know, okay? Anyway, I'm going off topic. Hey, y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bell. This is Bell Perspective. And we are here today to talk about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season five, episode, which epi what episode is this? Oh my God, why did I not write it down? Ah, season five, episode eight, The Desert and the Deserted. Girl, if you're new to my channel, I talk about reality, TV, books, movies, all sorts of things on the channel. So get in where you fit in by subscribing, getting in the comments, let me know what you think about the episode and liking this video before you leave let's get into it girl all right so i know i missed episode four i didn't miss it i missed reviewing it but i watched it because girl i was down to the bahamas girl getting my whole life more pictures to come and i have an announcement to make when i get back on on video so i have i have things don't worry you this is not the last that you've heard of me okay so anyway so i watched episode four so i'm gonna weave in a few things from episode four but we're gonna talk about episode five here in this review so we see meredith lisa and heather going down to the spa girl i love me a spa day girl okay that's my type of shit, girl. Get me to the massage, girl. Get me to the masseuse, girl. Give me a little, a little robe, girl. A little slipper, child. Okay, a little aromatherapy and a little lavender, girl. I'm there. Okay, sign me the fuck up. Anyway, so they down to the spa, and this is why I don't fool with Lisa like that. I, Lisa is the center of her own work. Like she is literally the center of her own universe, and nobody else around her. It is worth a damn, in her opinion, girl. This heifer had the nerve, okay? Did y'all notice it when when Heather went down to meet with them? They were having tea. She told them her version of what Bronwyn was doing when she invited her down to the house. And mind you, Bronwyn invited the goddamn girl to try to see if they could patch things up before she invites her over to the damn the uh, Palm Springs. And Heather fucked the thing up with her crazy ass. And you know what? I was over it. I'm gonna have to walk it back. It's been a couple times I had to walk it back. I'm gonna have to walk it back. Heather crazy, y'all. That heifer crazy. I don't know what's wrong with her. She is psycho, okay? It's like she needs something to follow, but she always following the wrong goddamn thing. Girl, what the hell wrong with you, girl? Turn around. Stand up. Get up, girl. She's so goddamn aggravating. Anyway, so Heather goes to tell the people, tell Lisa and Meredith that, oh, you know, Bronwyn invited me over there to basically beg for me to, you know, straighten up and fly right so I can go on this trip. I said, girl, how did you jump? When I tell you the spirit of assumption just leaped in her ass and caused her to jump from here to there, girl, how the hell did you get your ass over there and get with that strong ass chin? How did you and your strong chin get from here to there in that in that in that single bound, love? I don't understand. I don't understand. Please help me understand, okay? So she telling him a whole different version. Now here go Lisa. Ass. I said, Lisa, this one I'm fool with you. I tried to give you a chance now to Angie a little. You know, she all right to me, but she all right. I ain't gonna talk about Angie. She all right. But this is why I couldn't really give, I couldn't say that Angie was in wrong because Lisa be on some bullshit. Now, so she ha takes the opportunity to jump on how Bronwyn didn't check on her, right, after Whitney had called her out down to the party. Now, again, Whitney called the girl, said that she was the one that was going around trying to say the girl's stuff was from Alibaba. Now, is Lisa wrong about the shit being from Alibaba, baby? Let's it don't take a rocket scientist to see that bullshit is from Alibaba, girl. It don't take a rocket scientist, but that's none of our business, okay? Who are we, who are me to get in front of that girl coin? If she want to spend $4.99 on a necklace and sell it to y'all for $15, that's her business and, and your business too, because girl, I ain't paying for none of that bullshit, okay? But anyway, so I'm saying now, so Lisa, here you go, talking about your good girlfriend, Bronwyn, with Heather, who obviously got a bone to pick with her, and you talking about, oh, I'm, this is your opportunity to talk trash about your friend, Bronwyn. I said, see, see, Lisa, this is why I don't fool with you now. You want blind loyalty no matter what. It doesn't matter what it looks like, how it gets there. You want people to kiss your ass, okay? And suck on the dick, like Bronwyn said. And don't nobody got time for that shit, girl. We all have our own opinions. We're going to stand up for our own what's right. And we're going to do and say what we feel like is right and wrong. And period. You need to be okay with that. So she also tells Lisa, or Lisa also tells Heather, 
that she didn't like how Bronwyn was trying to basically say that her and John be causing mess, chaos, and confusion. My husband is a CEO and he would not do that. That's not how he roll. Well, bitch, I couldn't tell when you was got down to um, Angie anniversary party and who was over there cutting the fool and showing your whole entire ass, yelling to my son, I want security. We're going to extend to the fullest extent. Girl, if you felt like that, if you felt like you wasn't part of no drama, why the hell did you get loud and go over to Justin tell my son your wife is a fucking liar? Girl, how, what part of that is not about drama? I said, girl, Lisa, you dig your own grave and I hate it for you. I really do. I really do. And so you took this opportunity to talk cash money shit about Bronwyn instead of taking it to her. So you do have issue with her. You treating her differently and you treat her differently with the girl who don't like her. Girl, who, who is your good girlfriend who's loyal to you by fault? And that's the thing about Heather. She always on the wrong side of damn history. That's why her ass got that damn strong ass chin. It get on my damn nerves. Okay, let's keep going. So we see Todd and Brian on real quick. Now they're going to have, they're planning their anniversary trip. It's not their wedding anniversary, but is their first time that I think they went on a date or started dating. I think that's what it was. So that's cute. Todd is already like, listen, I'm old as fuck. Baby, I don't have time for no goddamn drama. Don't bring that bullshit here. I don't have time to be fucking with no ignorant ass niggas on my goddamn trip. Take, tell the motherfuckers to stay where the fuck they at if they ass ain't gonna come with correctness, okay? Bring act right when you come on this goddamn trip, okay? <laughs> Todd said, don't play with me, okay? I'm not for play, play. I said, I know it's fucking right. They get a, they get in a private jet and everything. I said, come on. I know that's motherfucking right, bitch, okay? Girl, Todd, Todd ain't playing with them. Okay, bring bring at right or don't bring it all. Oh, don't don't come at all. Come with at right or don't come at all. That's almost right. Anyway, Whitney and Justin. In the episode before, in episode four, John comes to Justin and says, I think that you owe Lisa an apology. <laughs> I love how Justin handled it so politely. Right. The men, they're going to keep it. They're going to keep it light because they know that men, the men, it, it quickly turns into violence. And so they have to learn how to. Uh, handle things, mitigate all to, all, uh, uh, conflicts quickly because it could turn quick, easily it turned into violence, right? And so Justin was like, nah, <laughs> let me talk to my wife about that. Well, basically me, fuck you and your raggedy ass wife. Ain't nobody finna be apologizing her ass, but I ain't gonna say that to you right now because I'm not trying to choose violence, okay? And so in my mind, I said, I know Lisa is fucking kidding me. You went over to Justin during the party in front of everybody yelling, that Whitney is a liar and it causing this whole entire scene. But you want Whitney and Justin to apologize to your ass? I said, Lisa, girl, if you don't get your head out your goddamn ass, get your head out the sand, girl. That lady is delusional than a mother. She's so delusional, okay? I can't fuck with Lisa. I really can't. She get on my nerves. So we see a quick little clip of Lisa talking about the trip and Lisa and John, they packing for the trip, talking about the trip and feeling like Lisa feels like the worst thing that you could say about me is that I'm a bad mom. And if Angie says that about me, then that's her truth serum. And I said to me, I said to her, a hit dog always holler. Okay. I don't know if y'all ever heard that. My grandma used to say it all the time. A hit dog will holler. Now, a hit dog will always holler. Okay. And so you getting teary eyed and crying all the damn time because somebody call your ass a bad mom, baby. I feel like, okay, I'm not going to go there. But I feel like a hit dog always going to holler. All right. We're going to keep it moving. Now, we see Bronwyn, Meredith, and Lisa. Everybody is um, getting ready to go on the trip, right? They're they're packing, getting into the private jet. Not packing, but they're, you know, climbing, getting, packing into the jet to go on this trip to Palm Springs. And we see seeing little clips of everybody doing their thing here and there. All the husbands are invited, so that's real cute. Heather not coming because she got into a round one in the episode before. Decided to take a leap in a single bound, raggedy heifer. And then, obviously, uh, Brittany is not coming because, girl, Brittany is on some bullshit. Come on, she loved Jared and, you know, that's the man that she really want. But she lonely and she feels like he treats her so good, you know, most of the time. And I was like, Brittany, I don't have time for your delusions. And I'm low key kind of glad her ass wasn't in this goddamn episode because she fucking irritates me. I'm just like, the answer is right there, but you are just afraid to reach out and grab it. Tell me something. She want to be a good mom and she feels like she can be happy, be a good mom and happy at the same time. I said, but you are not happy with this man. So what are you talking about? Girl therapy. Uh, whoever is doing Jenna's therapy on Real Housewives of New York, baby, get send your car. Send your car so we can get it to Britney. Cause girl, please. Okay. So anyway, let's keep it moving. Now, this is where we find out that we get a little bit of Bronwyn's side of the story from what Heather told 
Meredith and Lisa. And they're like, oh, well, you know, that's not what Heather told us. You know, she said that you you tried to pick a fight with her so you didn't have to come. So she didn't have to come. And, you know, we just feel like there's a misunderstanding. You guys are on the same page. You need to communicate. And Brian was like, now how the hell y'all hoes sat up here and listen to what the hell Heather got to say when I'm telling you my side of the story. Y'all are like, oh, I don't know about that. Maybe you need to check with Heather. Bitch, how is that even possible? And it's possible because Lisa really got beef with you. So she not really fucking with you like that because she ain't like how you ain't kiss her ass after Whitney went up to her and told her about that damn lie. And quiet as it's kept, do I believe that Lisa Barlow started that bullshit with Whitney and her Alibaba jury? I do. I do. Because the way Lisa cut up and act the monkey down to that lady party, yes. I said, girl, you doing too, entirely too much for some shit to be to my alive, girl. I said, uh-uh, girl, your voice is way too loud for me. Girl, you way too high. You causing too much drama, too much of a scene for me. But that's me, okay? That's part of me, okay? And so, I said, the problem is Lisa ain't fucking with you like that, Bron. When that's why she doing this, okay? And Bron was like, "What's going on? I don't know what's going on with Lisa. She acting this thing." As soon as we get to the house, she ain't really fooling with me like that. I'm like, "Is everything okay? Did I say something mean to her? You know, we gonna get into that in just a second. So hold on, hold on, hold on. So they get to the house. Everybody's kind of hanging around. Seth is in a panic frenzy, looking for a bathtub because you know Mary Mary just gotta have a damn bathtub wherever she go. I said, "Bitch, get your own damn bag. Go, go get your own hotel room, girl. We don't got time for this, okay?" Um, they're all sitting out on the patio. It was Lisa, Meredith, Seth, and John. Okay. Seth tells Meredith that he's not gonna be able to stay. He's gonna have to leave the next morning because he gotta go to Ohio. Now, here's the thing. I don't understand. I don't understand the white men, especially well, no, the white men or the white women. I don't understand y'all because why the hell are you on vacation trying to rush back to go to work? I don't understand. I don't I specifically don't understand the white men because why in the world do white men always feel like they got to be in the office all the damn time. Like, oh, I got to go back to the office. You're literally on vacation. You probably could check an email here and there on your phone, but you do, the office I'm pretty sure is going to run fine without your ass for a day or two. Do you hate your wife, Seth? Do you only want to be a husband for an hour or two a week and then move on so you don't got to fuck with her? What is the problem? Because I understand. I, I, Dwight's, Dwight, men, can you please help me understand? Because I don't get it. Because every white man I know is always running from his goddamn family telling me he got to be in the office. And I don't understand. I really don't. But anyway, let's move on. Meredith don't like that, clearly. She's like, this is turning into Toronto. I don't understand what the hell going on with my husband. He don't want to be here. He always running around. He got some other stuff going on. Now, if he don't got no other family down in Ohio or wherever the hell he was going, sir, why the hell your ass can't be here in the Palm Springs, girl? Please have me understand. Explain it to the class. We listening. Okay. Anyway, let's move along. Okay. Now I, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot going on this episode. It wasn't a lot going on, but it was a lot going on. If that makes any sense. So we see the scene by the pool. Okay. And Meredith and Lisa are acting strange. They're on one side of the pool and the other girls are like, okay. Angie walks up. She has this really cute bathing suit on. She was like, well, I went over there to try to say, hey, but it was real awkward and they weren't acting welcoming. So I was just like, okay, what's going on, bitch? Okay. And so Whitney is also saying, well, you know, I, it's probably awkward because Lisa wants Justin to apologize to her and that's not happening. And so Whitney explains the whole apology thing that Lisa wants for them. And they both, both Whitney and Lisa ain't apologizing to a goddamn thing. And Bronwyn was like, well, bitch, maybe y'all both can cancel it out so y'all can move on because ain't none of that happening. Okay. You ain't apologizing and she ain't either. Okay. And so Angie was like, you know what? Let's break the ice. I'm gonna go get some. I think it's Mivita. I think it's Lisa Barlow's alcohol child. I'm going to go get her alcohol. We're going to get some shots. We're going to get some tequila, girl. We're going to pour it up. We're going to have a good time, okay? And so Angie does a, a you know a cute thing, trying to you know break the ice, you know, show the girls, hey, girl, hey, let's have fun. We here at Palm Springs. She goes to get the shots. She's passing them around. All the girls eventually get to the hot tub together. So the husbands are over on the other side in the pool, I think, and the ladies are in the hot tub, and they're all getting to talking. And Bronwyn says that she's going to go to the bathroom. Now, as Bronwyn gets up to go to the bathroom, Heather, I mean, Lisa is all of a sudden, I miss Heather. It's so sad that she couldn't be here. I just can't believe that she couldn't be here. And, you know, I'm just going to call her. Bitch, as soon as she did that, I said, oh, Lisa, you deserve to get dragged from east to west, girl. You deserve to get dragged from north to south. Bitch, I can't wait till Bronwyn eat your ass up for lunch, bitch, and, and, and drink some Kool-Aid on the side hole. I cannot 
wait until she eat your ass up. I really can't. Because Lisa, the way that you show so much disrespect, but want so much respect on the front end from all of your friends, I said, bitch, you, delu you too goddamn delusional for me, ho. You really are, okay? And so... Lisa, this is how she gonna FaceTime Heather. Heather's like, hey, girl, hey. They're all like, hey, girl, hey. Now, they ain't gonna be nasty to her, but they like, oh, bitch, don't do that shit. Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> bitch, don't call Heather. Oh, hey, Heather, how you doing? Okay, girl. The way they did, that shit was funny as fuck to me. I'm not even gonna hold you. Okay? So, girl, as, per, as, as, as anybody would be pissed off, right? Brown pulls up and was like, bitch, I know you ain't wait till I go pee to call Heather on the goddamn phone. Why the hell y'all calling this lady? She was like, oh, we just missed her. We wanted to be. Girl, how the hell you worried about what the fuck going on with her? How is that? What I tried to patch things up. And I think it's weird that your ass is even here if you feel like you believe Heather over me when I, you and I, and I'm always defending you. Because, girl, we went on a picnic and no, or we went on a walk and them hoes was talking about you like a dog, girl. And I said, listen, I hear what y'all saying about Lisa, but I don't know that, Lisa. I've always protected you and stood up for you, but you can't do that shit for me. You can listen to what the hell Heather got to say, but bitch, you can't hear nothing I got to say about nothing either. Oh, hell no. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So they get going back and forth and forth and back, girl. And when I tell you, when I tell you, girl, she was like, Lisa was like, well, you didn't defend me when Whitney was over here telling lies. I said, there it is right there. There it is right there, Bronwyn. Cuss her ass out. She wants you to be loyal and because you weren't loyal. She not going to do it. Like as if the whole situation, mind you, Bronwyn did check in on Lisa down to the party after she tried to disrupt that lady Angie um, shit. I said, girl, Lisa is too damn delusional for me. Oh, my God. I cannot do it. Now, this is what, now, side note, okay, I'm giving, I'm giving Bronwyn all eights on this, okay? I give her 8.5 8, 8 on cussing Lisa ass out, but she get a two. And when I tell you a cold, smooth two, when in a confessional, she get to talking like, oh, yeah, you know, I was trying to figure out if I was wrong. Did I say something to Lisa? Did I make her mad? I don't know what I did, but this bitch right here, she's dead ass wrong. I don't know how she, this bitch dead ass wrong. I was like, oh, you please don't do that. <laughs> lead, lead, lead the AAVE to us, boo. Please don't. I don't need you to, I don't need you to do that, Bronwyn. I don't need you to. I feel like Bronwyn, one of those type of people who I'm down with the people. My hairdresser is black, girl. Don't play with me, okay? I, I I I have a very short fuse with the whites right now. I don't have a very I have a very short fuse. Don't do that. Don't do that. No more Bronwyn. Okay. Just speak in your regular speech. Mama, speak your speech, girl. Don't don't sit up here and try to add no extra sauce because that shit was awkward as fuck and I ain't like it. Okay. Anyway. So again, they get back and forth and forth and back. She was like, well, excuse me, Lisa Barlow. So you mean to tell me that every time you have an issue, I need to jump up and basically suck your dick and do everything you need me to do so that you can feel whatever type of way. But when I need you to stand up for me, bitch, I'm on my own. Oh, hell no, nah, girl. She get up. Todd is like, oh, uh, now I know y'all ain't fucking with my motherfucking wife on our anniversary. I told y'all last is to come correct or don't come at all. I said, I know this motherfucker. Come on, Todd. Todd was like, hey, 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 over there, what going on? What going on over there? What the hell going on? Is y'all fucking with my wife? Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I'm not for play, play. I said, come on, Todd. Come on, Todd, baby. Hello. So as Bronwyn gets up, Todd pissed off. Lisa delusional, period. You know, I don't think I did anything wrong. I know I didn't do anything wrong. I said everything. I, I don't even want to be involved. Bitch, you are involved. As soon as you started opening your mouth and talking about Bronwyn down to that T, I said, bitch, you are involved, okay? And I don't, you know, and I, they're going to hick up and they're going to talk and then everyone's going to be apologizing to me. I was like, oh, this, she is crazy. Girl, she crazy. Anyway, Whitney goes over to talk to Brian when I said the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Whitney, you ain't sleep, bitch. I see your ass too. Uh, Bronwyn, I just want to make sure that everything is okay. Like, you know, I just want to check on you. I don't know what's happening, but, you know, if Heather Gay is being the, the mouthpiece for Lisa Barlow, it's, like, not okay. And, like, I don't think that that's right. Like, yeah, girl. Please, okay? But I, I, I see what you're doing, Whitney. I see you sowing seeds. I see you sowing seeds. I respect it because it's housewives, but if it was real world, no ma'am. Don't do that, okay? Todd pissed, okay? The fuck? I told y'all motherfuckers, go come up in here, put start no bullshit with my wife, okay? This is our anniversary. This is our nice house. This is our private jet. Don't, don't, cause no, don't be coming up in here causing no chaos and no goddamn confusion. Hey, John, what's going on? Hey, hey, brother, let me talk to you. Let me, let me holler at you real quick. 
John was like, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, what's going on? What's up, what's up, dude? Right? Like, hey, what's going on, dude? <laughs> Why do I feel like that's how I do the whites talk? Again, I have a very short fuse with the whites this evening, today, okay? What's up, dude? Hey, I told y'all I ain't want no foolishness. This is my wife's anniversary, okay? And I told her I ain't want no bullshit up in this house. Let me tell you something. If Lisa don't get her shit together, if you don't get your shit together, y'all can get the fuck from up out of here, okay? Don't cause no more chaos and confusion in my damn house. If I see my wife walk off, storm off mad, because one of y'all motherfuckers done said some shit she don't like, bitch, you can go. I, I pack you up a car and y'all can take y'all asses on. I say, I know that's motherfucking right. I know that's motherfucking right. Come with act right or don't come at all, bitch. Okay. Anyway, I really enjoyed the episode. It was to be continued. We're going to see the more, the rest of it with the Salt Queens girl loving it. Um, Yeah, y'all get in the comments. Tell me what y'all think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. Okay. Subscribe to the channel. I need some help, y'all. I'm, I'm getting like in a, in a stuck place. I feel like I'm getting in the, I'm stuck in the YouTube sunken place or something. Y'all help me out. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video. Do the things. Help me out. Get in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Ruin my vibe. Usually I don't do this often. But since recruiting isn't an option. Due to unusual.